untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today I was taking a look at a bootleggers stash deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Stash is a 6 mana mythic rare artifact saying a land we control can tap to create a treasure token. So it doesn't necessarily generate extra mana unless we've got some more synergies going with it. And the main synergy we're exploiting in this deck is the one with a dragon spark reactor, a 2 mana artifact that when it enters the battlefield or another artifact enters the battlefield under our control we can put a charge counter on it and then 4 mana sacrifices reactor and deals damage equal to the number of charge counters on it to a player and a creature. So now if we tap one of our lands to make a treasure we get to put a counter on our reactor which will quickly add up and before you know it we're at 20 counters and we can just one hit KO the opponent. And then looking at the rest of our deck we kind of built this in a more controlling build so we've got some early removal with strangle and early sweeper in the form of crush the weak which can also exile creatures and we can foretell it on turn two so we don't have to waste our mana, so between Reactor, Foretell, and sacrificing a Neverwinter Dryad for ramp on turn 2, we've got plenty of early plays going on. And then at 3 mana we have Field Trip for more ramp, Finding a Forest and letting us learn one of our 7 sideboard lessons, which include Double Mascot Exhibition as a nice mana sink, but we also have Teachings of the Archaics as a blue card that we can still support thanks to all the treasure tokens in our deck, and we also have our Pathway which can potentially be played on blue if we already have double reds and green sorted, so we can draw a few extra cards and refuel. And then we also have a few of these treasure makers in Unexpected Windfall and for Big Score to discard a card, make two treasures and draw two. So great with Reactor, putting extra counters on it. And of course also very good with Goldspan Dragon, which is the final piece of the puzzle. Just a very powerful 5 mana dragon that can come in with haste, make a treasure and let us sacrifice our treasures for twice the amount of mana, which just gives us a ton of mana advantage over the opponent and also plays well with our Reactor and of course with Bootlanger Stash now essentially doubling our mana from our lands every turn and then our big score and windfall become mana neutral with a gold span in place since they cost four mana which we can make with two treasures and they leave two treasures behind so we can essentially put extra counters on reactor for free and keep digging through the deck to find more action and then of course endgame involves activating reactor for the win we can get there with goldspan dragon also have a few creature lands in our mana base with two den of the bugbear and then we also have the channel lands for added interaction and Lair of the Hydra can also be a nice finisher if we can sink a bunch of mana into it. And then we also have two copies of Crackle with Power, which we can use as an early removal spell for maybe X equals 1, dealing 5 damage to a creature. But in the late game, if we can spend X equals 2 or X equals 3, it can also just be a burn spell to finish off the opponent with maybe the extra mana we produce from Goldspan and Bootlegger's Stash. So that can also get there if the opponent maybe has answers to our Dragon Spark reactor. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Some early interaction, big score can maybe ramp into bootlegger stash. And then we're hoping to pick up some goldspan dragons or dragon spark reactors. Can foretell crush the weak against a banned deck. Could be control, in which case Crush a Week's not going to be very helpful, but still seems mana efficient to do so. Well, against tokens, I'm liking Crush the Week a lot. And then probably want double reds. Don't have a whole lot going on unless I want to Crush the Week, but I think we can wait. And then we'll pass and hope to pick up a fourth land. So we can windfall or big score. Take two. Wedding announcement would be unfortunate, but luckily dodged it. And now we can pass with Unexpected Windfall, discarding a Strangle. Opponent might have a play here, end of turn. Not sure what it could be. Okay, there's the wedding announcement. So now if our opponent attacks, they'll get to draw a card, end of turn. So then we might want to wipe the board. But for now, happy to windfall, discard, strangle. Opponent may have that one mana counter spell that gives us two treasure. Opponent may have a march of otherworldly lights, which can exile artifacts as well. So that's potentially a concern. 
So, yeah, we can go for Bootlegger's Stash, keeping as many lands untapped as possible. Although that's mostly relevant if we have a Dragon Spark Reactor in play. Make a treasure, and then the question is do we want to crush the weak? Could also just strangle, kill one token, have the opponent overextend, although strangle may be useful for finishing off planeswalkers instead. So how much do I care for opponent draws a card? Yeah, I guess we'll wait on the crush the weak still. And hopefully kill a few more creatures in the process. Alright, Falco. Has a shield counter, so that we can remove with Crush the Weak, and then Strangle can finish it off. And then we probably want to get our Dragon Spark Reactor going too, using a Treasure first. And then I guess this can just tap normally for now, and then we'll start making Treasures. Could big score as well. And then we would still have enough mana for Crush the Weak and Strangle. And then maybe discard Lair of the Hydra. Yeah, that's reasonable. Another reactor. One goes up to seven. Crush the weak. March exiles Dragon Spark Reactor, sadly. But we'll deal with Falco. Join the dance flashback. Pun gets another token. And step one, get a reactor in play. And then start tapping lands for treasures again. And then it's probably reasonable to just crush the weak here. And hope there's no second March exiling reactor. And then we can discard whatever we top deck if it's aligned. Elspeth can mine us to maybe find another enchantment. I'll be your shield. It's gonna be a duelist, a 3 2 double strike. That's pretty scary. Reactor is ticking up. I'll keep Den available for now. Just sack four treasures for a big score. And keep digging. Alright, field trips, not too bad can find a card draw spell, so we can keep digging, and then am I in any immediate danger of dying? This can go up to 4 power, so that hits for 8, and then this hits for 4, so 12, not quite dead. Second field trip. Alternatively, let's see, yeah we cannot deal damage to planeswalkers with the reactor. So get a forest, learn for teachings, and that'll draw a few cards. So wouldn't be using Den here as a creature. Reactor up to 14, so next turn we should be able to kill them, assuming we survive. Wandering Emperor. That's another plus one counter. So that's 10 damage. Show them how we greet our 
or at 5. And yeah, reactor next turn. We'll kill them. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We've got our early interaction, bit of ramp, and our stash to hopefully combo with a future reactor or a gold span dragon. So we can foretell here against the black deck. Crush the weak should be helpful. Mono black so far, there's a reactor. Still prefer ramping with field trip. And then we're kind of light on lands in hand, so I could see getting a copy of environmental sciences. Can discard a stash to big score to set up the second copy. Maybe at that point I want teachings. Or we can go with a mascot exhibition, but against a black heavy deck. They have a lot of creature removal, but not so much answers to artifacts. So, I think I'm liking the teachings here. Opponent black-white. Alright, that changes the texture of the game a little bit. Because it means they can have answers to artifacts in the form of Vanishing Verse. And uh, there's also Rite of Oblivion. So do I want to keep a second stash is a question, and that's a tough one to answer. Kind of want a windfall now to hit my land drop. Hmm, to keep stash or not to keep stash. Maybe I have to get rid of big score, and then hope reactor plus stash is enough if they answer the first stash. But uh, yeah, discarding big score feels bad. And then I don't think I want to play anything. Keep my treasures for stash. Could have played a reactor now, I suppose. Opponent with a field of ruin, that's fine. So they may be keeping up a wandering emperor. Alright, so I can play stash, and then... I guess we'll just pass. They can hit it with vanishing verse. But I think now that we have a backup, I would rather have them exile stash over a reactor. Pass a turn. And there's Emperor. So they will be able to put a plus one counter on it, potentially getting it out of range of a single Crush the Weak, but we could cast two of them. Bankbuster for card draw. Put in putting a counter on the Restoration, so that's out of range of a double crush the week. Okay. Step one, play reactor. Can time this for normal mana, and then we'll start making treasures. Putin may have a vanishing verse in hand that they're kind of looking at. So maybe just playing Dryad and keeping up a reactor in case they try to remove it is the play. Could kill the architect right now. We'll just play a Dryad and pass. And then next turn I can go for teachings. Opponent's got a Ray of Enfeeblement instead. So we could sacrifice a Dryad, get a land, and then there's a chance they can exile Reactor. Although, at this point it feels like if they had Vanishing Verse they would have used it already. So, sure, we'll get a land. And pass it back. Alright, so we're going to take a bit of a beating here, but hopefully next turn we can stabilize. Soren can make a vampire, goes drawing instead. So at least teachings is more likely to be a draw three. 
Architect of 5-6. So Bangbuster is also going to draw, presumably. This is an enchantment, so if we get another copy of uh, Field Trip, we can get our Disenchant to remove it. Big Score can discard Stash. And then I didn't think we'll be able to pressure any of the Planeswalkers here with Hive, so I'm fine to make a bunch of treasure. Big score, discard stash. Another big score. So, Dragon Spark Reactor up to 10, might have to take out Restoration. So we don't take too much damage. So we'll go up to 7 treasures, can make it 8. How relevant is Crush the Weak? It's not super relevant anymore. So play a land, make a treasure. So I could big score, discard, Crush the Weak, and if we draw into another 4 mana treasure maker we could just win with Reactor right now. Opponent draws with Bankbuster. Ooh, a Crackle with power. Now Boseju also answers Architects, so we don't have to use our Dragon Spark Reactor necessarily. So now I think we just pass. And then I can Boseju Architect, keep up Reactor in case they try and kill it to put them to 2 life and take it from there. And then next turn, Crackle will also be able to finish the job. Emperor makes a Samurai. May your blade strike true. Bangbuster Cruise. Should have used Basaju before they got a chance to attack. Now they got a free 1-1. One, one. Opponent should be dead here by the time we untap. If they try and kill Reactor, we activate it in response, put them to 2, and then Crackles 5 more. And at 5 life, feeling pretty safe. Maybe if Hive got activated, I would have been forced to use Reactor before taking the damage. And actually, a Meatook Massacre here, killing their own creatures, would drain me for 5 exactly. So we have to use a Reactor in response to kill, let's say, the Bangbuster. That way we only take 4 down to 1, so very sketchy. That extra 1-1 one, one could potentially make the difference. Okay, that works. We get to untap, and now Crackle with power should be able to close out the game. Can cast it for X equals 2 here even, dealing 10 damage. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is functional. Second bootlegger stash we can maybe discard at some points. And then early strangle into field trip. Put on blue whites. Maybe spirits. Still fine to field trip. And then would love to find a gold span dragon or a dragon spark reactor. What do we want to learn for? Maybe just Mascot Exhibition as something big to try and stabilize against the creature deck. 
And then next turn maybe big score plus triangle. Okay, put in more of a blue-white kind of aura deck, going all in on one creature. So strangle, quite useful. Mascot exhibition, maybe not so much if they can make their creature unblockable. And if they have a protection spell here, that would be quite the problem as well. There's blue mana for maybe a slip out the back. Well, let's strangle first in case of spell pierce. They might have a bound spell instead. See a guard approach for hexproof. Yeah, that's uh, not what we wanted to see. All right, so we'll pass with a big score available since there's no spell of woods cast after drawing into it. And then one stash can go. And then desperately need to find more interaction here. Another copy of field trip can maybe get a disenchant effect for bypass. Ponon did also have a spell pierce. So glad they got rid of that at least. 3-3 three, three double strike can end the game pretty quickly. Okay, Boseju can get rid of the enchantment without the opponents being able to interact with it. So that's very helpful. So playing the bootlegger stash right now doesn't accomplish very much. If I go for exhibition, there's a chance they still have a spell pierce in hand they were saving. So maybe the safest play is just play Dryad and then keep a Boseju. And then we can chum block, ramp, maybe big score as well, we'll see. Pass it back. So let's see if the opponent attacks. I guess we can wait for them to attack and then Boseju. Opponent going for a blessed defiance. Okay, so they're maybe going in for the kill here, which is perfect since once we remove bypass, we will be able to block. Another see a guard approach could tap our dryad, which would be problematic, although then we can still animate then. Yeah, and that's exactly what happens. Okay, so now we're forced to animate then to chump. And if they have another one mana bounce spell, we're dead. Okay, we're still in the game. Another Dryad, so those can chum block for a while and hope they don't have another bypass. Could also go for a big score. Yeah, I really wanna sack this Dryad. So I'm kind of liking Dryad over Stash almost, since we don't have any synergies with it at the moment. So maybe I should big score now, discard Stash, see if we can hit a land drop naturally. And then take over with Exhibition. Gold spam is also good, so no land drop. But I should probably still play another backup Dryad. Or should I? I would waste a treasure. And I guess... Six damage doesn't kill us, so maybe we're safe to pass it back. And then jump and ramp. The good old Sakura Tribe Elder interaction. Got a couple forests left. And then now we can apply pressure with our gold span as well. Another stash, so... No shortage of those. This also plays around spell peers for what it's worth. Play Dryad. That can jump again. And again. And then we'll be able to exhibition to increase our damage outputs. Your opponent may have some protection spells in hand, which don't really matter as long as we can keep jumping and attacking in the air. And yeah, our opponent packs it in, so wow, what a turn of events. Lots of cool instant speed interactions to win the game for us. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Double reactor doesn't do much at the moment, but once we find our stash, maybe a gold span, or even some more of our four mana card draw spells, we'll be off to the races. So I might play one reactor, hang on to the second to maybe discard. Opponents killing our Dryad before we get to ramp, unfortunately. Alright, there's Windfall, so now I'm okay playing Reactor, since we know we can get at least a few more counters on it. And then Red White, Crush the Weak could also come in handy. Pyre gonna loot, so maybe more of a Reanimator deck with Velomachus plus Invoke Justice. That is scary. So now we need land 4 pretty badly. How much do I need to crush the weak in this matchup? I don't think it's going to do much for me. So we'll play another reactor instead. And then hopefully find red mana for windfall. Discard crush the weak. Ramp towards stash with double reactor. Alright, perfect. And then might as well do it now. In case we find something else useful. Another stash. Okay. So if we can keep up a reactor during the opponent's turn to maybe kill Velomachus before it gets a chance to attack, that would be great. Although we may end up a couple mana short. So next turn we can see Invoke Justice. Fable for now. Okay, second so play, stash, and then still make one treasure, probably better than playing a lair. And then hopefully we don't get one hit KO'd by Invoke Justice. And can play this on blue, not that it really matters. Okay, so next turn we can untap and keep up Reactor for a large Velomachus. In the meantime, gonna get hit by the Goblin Shaman. Opponent keeps digging. Does our opponents search through the graveyard? They do. Yep, so they've got the Justice, and this is gonna hurt. Hopefully no Chaos Onslaught for Double Strike. Alright, burn down the house. Makes a couple Devils. Yeah, we're still in trouble here. But at least we've got our Reactors online. So one of them can kill Velomachus. And another one will have to deal with the Architect most likely. Do we have enough for Lethal? I guess we're getting there, yeah, with two reactors we should get there. Although I guess we won't have the mana to activate both. So I can activate one reactor. Seven mana, yeah, one mana short. So I can pass and activate this in the opponent's turn. Kill Velomachus, and then five, six, seven, eight we would fall to one. So any additional plus one counter or hasty creature kills us. And yeah, another burn down the house will do it. Oh man, so close. Yeah, we can pop one reactor, killing Velomachus. One mana short of just burning the opponent out here. What a shame. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Just need to pick up a couple extra lands along the way. But a uh, reactor plus gold span can potentially add up to a lot of damage. And then a crush the weak to deal with any tokens or go white decks and uh, play this on red, this on green. 
Okay, opponent on a black kind of control deck. So I'm liking the double gold span. And Crush the Weak Exiling Creatures, also relevant. And yeah, there's Eye Twitch, perfect. And the second copy. Well, this Crush the Weak is going to be brutal. And I uh, don't think we need double green. Exile three creatures, opponent doesn't get any death triggers. And uh, yeah, now we're in a very nice position. Field trip gets our gold span online next turn. And then we may want to grab a teachings. Could just go for mascot exhibition. All the sweepers are going to be in our future, so we'd rather find like a stash to combo with reactor as opposed to relying too much on creatures, which the black deck can deal with pretty easily. So I could see getting teachings here, even though our opponent could empty their hand pretty quickly too. Ooh, go blank. That's unfortunate. So do I hang on to gold span teachings or double gold span? Kind of like gold span teachings more. Especially if we hit a land next turn, we can play both and then potentially just draw three. Okay, that works. Another reactor. Alright, so we're still missing a stash. Would love a windfall effect to keep digging, strangle. Play reactor first. Move to combats. And the opponent's kind of missing those early treasures and maybe environmental sciences, which they were counting on. Possible they're holding a deadly dispute with no targets. And our reactors are ticking up. Slowly but surely. And then probably fine to play one land out, keep the other to maybe discard to Windfall or Big Score. Yeah, Crush the Weak. Doesn't mess around. And yeah, opponent just seems pretty dead now. Gold Span attacks, puts them to 8, and then we can uh, potentially just activate Double Reactor for the win. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Early Crush the Weak, which we can foretell. And then Gold Span to ramp into Stash, which also synergize nicely together. Up against a Junt or Riveteers deck, which has plenty of creatures that die to Crush the Weak. And uh, one of them in particular, Underdog, is nice to exile. We'll field trip so we can set up a gold span next turn. They can keep Harvester for a turn. And learn four. Tricky question. Maybe mascot exhibition. Teaching's also reasonable. Because I will be able to empty my hand pretty quickly. So the extra card draw is always helpful. Take three. And hopefully opponent doesn't keep up removal for gold span. Another Harvester. Perfect. So now we can gold span plus crush the weak. And next turn hopefully bootlegger stash. Gold span may get removed, but then we still have stash plus reactor as a nice combo. Voltage Surge. Alright, still get a treasure at least. And then we want to teachings as quickly as possible. Before the opponent empties their hand. So, play Stash plus Lair seems fine. And then next turn get their reactor going. Or we can play Boseju untapped. And we'll do this. How much artifact removal could they have? Don't expect too much. So if we can keep reactor and stash going. 
and just keeps the board under control. That's all we need to do. And the yeah, opponent explodes. We get to untap with a stash. They know about our teachings, so we'll potentially be able to draw three even, and uh, we'll be in great shape. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Could use a couple more lands, but we've got Dryads for early ramp alongside Field Trip. Assuming the Dryad survives here. But uh, definitely want a couple untapped lands to go with it. Get in for one. And then, at the very least, we can Field Trip. Still need extra red mana for gold span, although can always use treasures. One on green whites, turn to Moon Dancers, so a life gain deck. Okay, they can definitely make some big creatures that we cannot necessarily kill with our burn spells or reactors. Another Dryad. It's awkward, but I think we'll field trip and then get environmental sciences, which can also get a mountain. So we're at the mercy of this Moon Dancer for now. Welcoming Vampire for card draw. So not immediately gaining life and a strangle. Okay, that's huge. So probably killing the vampire at this point. Sciences for mountain, play dryads. And then next turn we can gold span dragon. And then I'm probably gonna end up discarding a dryad to big score as well, so I don't think I wanted to play both. Another Vampire. That's okay. Take two. And there's our Reactor. Okay, so Gold Span attack, and then we're kind of setting up our Stash plus Reactor now. Dryad can chum block and ramp. Celebrant will start gaining a life for Moon Dancer, draws with Welcoming Vampire. So our opponents getting their synergies online as well. So possible we'll have to sacrifice a reactor before it's lethal just to keep the opponent's threats under control. So for sequencing next turn. What are we thinking? I could play a reactor, then attack with a gold span, then play stash and still make some treasure. Or I can attack, play stash with the extra treasure, still have three lands, which then makes six mana, then play reactor. I think that works out better. Yeah, gold span plus stash makes a ton of mana. Just have to be careful with our sequencing. So this makes two mana. Play stash. And then make treasure. Play reactor. Oh uh oh. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to sacrifice my treasure to play reactor. And then make two more treasure. So you've got to be real careful with uh, tapping your mana, so I should have just made treasures first, but I didn't want to because of reactors, so I guess I should have floated mana first. Alright, so that messed up my sequencing big time. Uh, I guess we'll pass it back now, as opposed to playing dried. So yeah, not only did we miss out on a bunch of mana, but we also missed out on a few counters on the reactor. Hopefully it's not going to cost us. But yeah, the auto-tapper, I guess, doesn't take stash into account. So now they could make a flying moon dancer, although we can still maybe take it out with a reactor and keep attacking with gold span. So get hit for seven. Crush the weak. Don't know if that does much. Alright, so step one, make treasure. And then we may attack with Den of the Bugbear as well. To finish off Elspeth. Ok, 
Okay, so that's 7 treasure, 14 mana. I guess we can big score, which is mana neutral, and digs a little bit deeper and adds counters to reactor. Actually, I may just be able to kill my opponent here now that I look at the board. So... Make some more treasure, more counters on reactor, and yeah, we can just activate Den of the Bugbear, attack, fire off reactor, and that's game. So the mists, counters, and mana luckily did not end up mattering. Our deck is somewhat forgiving. Make another treasure, more counters on reactor. And the big finish. Bam. Awesome. So yeah, getting to see all our synergies in action, especially if we get Reactor, Stash, and Gold Span going at the same time. The fireworks really start happening. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to approach these uh, Bootleggers Stash decks. I wanted to go in kind of a control direction, so you can kind of keep control of the board with your early sweepers, so you have more time to activate Stash and make more treasures. Because if you're playing a more creature-heavy deck, sometimes you play Stash, but... Then that's a 6-mana play that doesn't impact the board, you may be behind on board, and then uh, you fall further and further behind. Whereas if you played in a slightly more controlling build, you maybe have more time to leverage the powerful 6-mana artifact, and then uh, the treasures with the reactor seemed like a natural inclusion. But yeah, there's a ton of ways to build around Stash in Standard. Can maybe play with a bunch of other treasure synergies, like Magna, sacking five treasures to find a creature. You can also play it with a Ginny Fey, which can turn treasures into either cats or dogs. Can also play it with Stimulus Package, which can also turn treasures into 1-1 Citizen Tokens. So those are all options I've already kind of explored in some previous deck lists. So I wanted to go in a slightly different direction here. So yeah, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always... Have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.